Greetings, I'm William Vassbury, Chef Instructor here at the Community College of Philadelphia, and you're watching another version of The Chef's Cook on CCP-TV, the educational network here at the Community College. Today I'm going to show you how to make three different types of focaccia. Now focaccia shouldn't be confused with pizza. Pizza itself is a thinner crust, okay, an entirely different proportion, and it usually has a topping to it. Whereas focaccia, the ones I'm going to show you today, one's going to be sweet, uh, one's going to be fruit filled, and the other is going to be uh, a savory. Basically, the ingredients for focaccia, you can actually top the focaccia or you can put ingredients into it. The first thing I'm going to show you is a savory focaccia. Now, we're going to, I'm going to season up the focaccia itself with some herbs when I make the flour, and then I'm going to top it off uh, with some uh, uh, grape tomatoes some red peppers and some uh, red onions. I've, been ha I've had those marinating all night, so it's gonna give some little extra flavor and then for a little extra oomph, I'm going to dust it with some uh, nice fresh Romano cheese. The uh, sweet focaccia we're going to do, instead of making the focaccia using salt, I'm gonna use sugar for some sweetness. I'm gonna to top that with a homemade pastry cream and then I have some fresh fruit, some strawberries, blackberries and Blueberries we'll put on the top. It makes for a good dessert or a sweet uh, pick-me-up for a break any time during the day or even for breakfast. And finally, the fruit focaccia is going to have fruit incorporated into it. I have some dried cherries, dried cranberries, apricots, and some golden raisins. We're going to fold that into the dough. And we're going to bake it. And when it comes out of the oven, we can put some powdered sugar on it. Uh, one of the other things somebody asked me is, hey, can you have this anytime? Sure, it's a good breakfast treat. And someone said, can I toast it and put butter on it? No. You're going to see that once how normal, how beautiful this looks, the best thing you want to put on it is some cream cheese for breakfast. Now, because uh, when, we're, when you're doing any kind of uh, recipes where there's more than three or four or five ingredients. What I normally do is I have my uh, recipes with me so this way I don't make any mistakes. So for the savory focaccia, to give you an idea, we have dried yeast, water, all-purpose flour, garlic salt, celery salt, granulated garlic, oregano, thyme, basil, black pepper, vegetable oil, olive oil, and Romano cheese. Now my memory's good but it's not that good. Besides that when I'm making it I want to make sure if you always want to have consistent results. You always want to do the same thing. The easy part is uh, cooking. Uh, the hard part is you want to make sure that everything is measured or proportioned properly. So the first thing I'm going to start out today, we're going to make, I got my two mixers. What we're going to do is I want to make the fruit focaccia dough and I'm going to make the savory focaccia. So what I normally do, I'll take them off, okay? As I go down my list, I can see all-purpose flour, all-purpose flour. So I'll get my handy-dandy flour. All right, now once again, I keep my recipe so I know which is which. Here's the fruit, and here's the savory. And I just go down the list, okay, and I'm gonna add my flour over here. Let's see, I need three cups. There's one. All right, this way, no mistakes. All right, that's three cups there. Now we're gonna come over here for the fruit. It's a little hardier. We need five cups of flour. There's one. Now, am I sifting the flour? No, I don't have to. In this case, if the recipe says sift the flour, you do it. But because this is gonna be a tighter dough, we don't wanna have, a, we don't wanna have it loose. If you were to weigh a cup of sifted flour, and a cup of just packed flour, there is going to be a little difference. All right, so now the flour is in. Now what you could do, okay, all right, pencil, and it's like I'm just going to cross off my all-purpose flour, okay. Now the next thing I'm going to put in, usually in the recipes, it'll tell you everything you need. Um, the one thing that I have to stress, if you go down in order, the first thing is dry yeast, the next thing is warm water. You don't want to put any liquids in until the end. You want to make sure all your dry ingredients are in. Once you put the water to it, it's going to activate the yeast and anything else you put in, it's not going to mix properly and you're not going to have a consistent taste in your product. So in this case, I have my yeast, all right, I'm going to put the yeast in. Now, 
the one thing that activates the yeast, okay, is liquid. But I haven't put any, it's going to be towards the end. So for my fruit focaccia, we need one and a half tablespoons. There's one, and there's a half, all right. Uh, over here, savory focaccia, we need two and a half teaspoons, all right. In this case, three teaspoons make up one tablespoon, so I'm going to use a little less than a tablespoon. There's my two and a half teaspoons, okay. This is active dry yeast. It's very potent, and it, I've never had uh, this particular brand that I use, never had any problems with it. All right, so now we got our yeast in. All right, salt, one tablespoon. So in this case here, I'm using uh, sea salt. All right, nice hearty teaspoon, that's in. And over here we need salt, 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 okay. The only problem is we're not gonna use, now because this is a maybe a savory, focaccia, it's not sweet. I'm going to use some celery salt and I'm going to use garlic salt. I still get the salty flavor and I'm also going to get a little bit more of the flavor as well. So in this case here, half a teaspoon of garlic salt. All right, here's the celery salt. We're going to use our all right, garlic salt, that's in. Okay. Now over here, what do we have? We're just going to have regular salt, which we put in already, so we're all set. All right, cross it off my list again. A lot of times what happens, I'll be walking along, or like in the case here, I needed five cups of uh, flour. I'll start measuring. Someone will come along and say, oh, chef, what are you doing? I lost count. So normally, it's not rude to finish if you're counting five and then answer the person, because this way, you don't have to second guess and say, geez, was that three cups or four? You know it's the right amount all the time. Now, <clears throat> savory. We are going to put in some granulated garlic. Not only is this going to be the, the garlic salt for salty flavor, but we're going to get some garlic flavor as well. There we go. Now we're going to put in our herbs. Oregano, thyme, and basil. So here's our oregano leaves. Okay, we need one teaspoon, that's in. Okay, we're gonna put in some thyme, a half a teaspoon. All right, how about some basil? Half a teaspoon. Okay, and we're gonna put in some black pepper. All right, and that's gonna be a half a teaspoon as well. Okay, now we're all set. What else do we need? A little bit of vegetable oil. Um, I'm gonna put, put my batch there. Let's see, cinnamon, this and that. Okay, for the fruit focaccia, I'm not going to use cinnamon. I wanted to use something a little bit more in depth. So I'm going to use pumpkin pie spice. Why? It's not only cinnamon, it also has ginger, nutmeg, allspice, and it gives it a little bit more flavor profile. So that's what I'm going to use. And in this case here, we needed a half a teaspoon. So here we go. That's a half a teaspoon in. Whenever you're doing anything, it's flavor wherever you can interject it. So whenever you can put something in that's different, that has more flavor, you do it. If you make enough of these recipes and you do it enough, you know basically what you can substitute and what's going to give you a little bit more flavor. All right. <clears throat> now, this uh, device right here is known as a dough hook. All right. I don't want to use the paddle because it's not gonna put the dough in. I don't wanna use the wire whip, okay? I wanna use the dough hook because what we're gonna do is when I put the liquid to this, it's gonna knead the dough for me. It's gonna bring it together. Once the dough comes together, it forms a ball. I have a sheet pan, I'm gonna put a little oil down and I'm gonna put it in this proof box behind me and I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it uh, proof. Actually, what happens is the gluten network it tightens up and then it relaxes so I can stretch the dough out and then I can finish the product, okay? So here, now what I like to do also, okay, when I get the mixer going, now everybody it's like, oh, let's put it up to, let's have the thing going real fast. No, 
Keep it one speed, and that's all you have to do. I get it going one speed just to mix all my dry ingredients first. Now the last thing I have to do is just put my liquid into it. Over here we need uh, two and a half cups of warm water, and on this side we need one and a half cups of warm water. What's warm? I could take my temperature, my uh, thermometer, and go to regular tap water. If you can put your hand underneath and it's warm enough to wash and it's not burning your hands, my guess is it's probably about 85 to 90 degrees. That's warm enough. One thing you have to remember, you can't use boiling water or real hot water. Yeast is destroyed at 140 degrees. So the water you want to use, the best temperature range is between like 90 to 105 degrees. Okay, it activates the yeast, it keeps things going, and it won't kill the yeast. 140 degrees, if the water, if you're using burning water, uh, boiling water, uh, or even simmering, it's just too hot. You don't want to do it. So now, savory focaccia, we need one and a half cups of warm water. So what I normally do is I'm just going to let the mix run at the first speed to turn it on. All right, I'm going to let it go. Uh, over here we need, let's see, two and a half cups. So we're going to fill this up once. Okay, that's going to go in, mixing rather well. And we need another half a cup. Okay. What I'm going to do with the dough hook, I want to show you. Okay, if you can look down, you can see that it's the, the dough hook itself. Um, I'm going to have to bang on the side to get most of the flour in, or I can just stop it, get one of my spatulas. All right and I want to knock the flour down. I want to get it mixing. All right. Now this is important because once the dough starts to mix, it depends upon the, um, the mixer that you're using. The dough hooks here, and that should be better. I might have to stop it just one more time and just wipe down the sides, okay? But you want a good mix, all right? The idea is you want uh, the dough itself, you want a nice shiny bowl, and what's going to happen is the dough itself, as it mixes, it's going to pull off the sides. Now, here, my savory, I can see, I want to have this mix up because I want my herbs and everything else to mix properly. So once again, this is all set. We'll get this going. Okay, beautiful. If I have to stop and I have to wipe down the sides again, I will. So, that's the uh, fruit focaccia is going and the savory focaccia. So now while those are going, I want to explain for the fruit focaccia what I did earlier. The recipe called for some warm water. Okay, uh, I had some, I boiled some water and what I did was I put in the fruit, I wanted to soften it up. So if I need to put some more water in, I can use this fruit flavored water. If not, I'm just going to take the fruit and when the dough is combined, I'm just going to take the fruit, combine it, and I'm going to proof it with the fruit into it. Now, while that's going, what I can do is I can start and I can show you. All right, beautiful. This is going good. So now, for the, uh, the sweet focaccia, I'm going to be making that dough later. It doesn't need that much time to proof because what we're going to do is we're going to spread it out. We can go right to the oven to make a pastry cream. Now, the pastry cream itself, it's not only made, if you've ever had, uh, let's see, a Bavarian or a, a, a cream filled donut, that's basically what pastry cream is. It's uh, milk, cornstarch, sugar, uh, vanilla flavoring, uh, some butter that's in it, uh, egg yolks, and some whole eggs. And basically what you're doing is you're gonna take a quart of milk, all right, you're going to get a saucepan, okay, there we go, all right, I know it's going to work. Okay, I'm going to use a saucepan. The beauty of this recipe is it's actually one quart of milk exactly. Nothing to measure here, that's one quart of milk. Now, the milk goes in, all right, the next thing you're going to put in, mm -hmm.
Oh, beautiful. All right, this is going good over here. So with the pastry cream itself, okay, I have my milk and I weighed out four ounces of sugar, all right? Four ounces of sugar goes in, I turn it on. What I wanna do is I wanna have the sugar itself, when you first put it in, it's gonna seem like gritty. You want that to go in solution with the milk. Now, how do I know when this is ready? Real easy, it's my milk is gonna foam up for me. So now I have my four ounces of sugar. Now, for the other pastry cream, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our cornstarch. We're gonna take another four ounces of sugar. Now we're gonna take, okay, uh, I have some four ounces of egg yolks that I weighed out, okay, right here. That's gonna go in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix all of that together the last thing I need to put in with this other mixture here is two more whole eggs. I'm going to crack those. All right, there's one whole egg. Two. All right, now I got these wonderful eggs. All right, the dough is going. And this one, we're going to speed it up a bit and see if we can get that. All right, I'm going to take my, take my eggs. Now, you want to get a nice mixture for your pastry cream. When this begins to foam, I know that it's going to be warm enough, okay? But if I were to put this egg mixture in, it would turn to scrambled eggs inside of sweetened milk. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a term, it's called tempering. Little by little, I'm going to ladle some of the milk, the warm milk, back into the cool egg mixture and actually bring the temperature of the egg mixture up and then finally I can put it into the mix with the milk and I can uh, begin to thicken it up. So. Let's see how close we are. Yes, the temperature is about a hundred and about 155 degrees. All right, so when it hits about 180, it should start to simmer. So that's going along well. Then we'll be able to temper our pastry cream. All right, when that's done, we temper that. Oh, beautiful. Here. If you can look down into the bowl, let me swing this over. See how, see how the dough is coming off the sides of the bowl? That's what you want. It's not supposed to stick. It's come along very well, and it's going to knead for us properly. Rather than knead it by hand, which you can, we're going to let the machine do the work, and then the rest of the proof box is going to also make it nice and smooth. Okay, so milk's going. This is looking really good. Perfect, so things are going well. All we need now is for our milk to start foaming a bit and we're in business. This is looking good. Another thing you wanna watch is when you're making your pastry cream, the, um, you can feel the, uh, the sugar. If it's too scratchy on the bottom, it's too gritty, it's not in the solution. So the warmer the milk gets, the better anything is gonna go into solution. In this case, it's the sugar, all right? Ah, you can smell the milk. It's fantastic. All right, about another minute. Oh, you can see now. Yeah, let me pull it over. If you can see, right in the middle, you see how it's starting to foam up? Okay, that's good. Now what I'm gonna do, all right, there we go. Turn it off. This is where a lot of times people say, oh, they forgot they didn't get a spoon, forgot something. By the time they get back, it's overflowed. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to switch. I'm going to take, take away my spatula. All right. 
Okay, now I want to put in a little milk at a time, and it's not a lot. All I want to do is just temper it, okay? If I put it in too fast, I'm going to get scrambled eggs, which I don't want. All I want to do is bring up the temperature of the egg mixture, okay, just a little at a time. Now it's going to thin it out a bit, of course. It's going to take away the lumps. Now, by me constantly stirring, you see how nice and loose that is? All right, if I'm stirring it, I'm actually cooling it down as well. So as you can see, I don't have scrambled eggs, I have liquid eggs. Now let's put some more in. All right, a little at a time. This is called tempering. This is what I want to do. Not only do you do it for some kind of creams, you can also do it if you're doing some other kinds of culinary sauces as well. Anything that contains eggs, you just don't want to dump it into a recipe because it'll just curdle. Okay, here we go. Ah, you see how it is? Nice mixture. I'll probably wind up putting in half the milk. Okay. Now another thing you can do is feel the sides of the bowl. It's kind of warm. So once again, I'm just going to, a little at a time, when you're doing things, when you want quality results, you take your time. There's no such thing uh, as if I were to turn the mixers up where they're going super fast, it's not going to do anything. And if you just throw things in a pot and stir it up, that's just what it's going to taste like. You threw it together in a pot and stirred it up. But you have to do certain things, you want the quality. That's the one good thing. And it takes time. I tell my students, if you don't have the time to do it right, then you don't need to make it, because why waste your time? All right, here we go. Beautiful. This is coming up. I'll put a little bit more in. Right. Uh, one more ladle full. Okay. Now, if I were to feel the bowl, it's kind of warm. I know that's warm, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to pour this mixture back in with my milk, nice and slowly. All right, and I'm going to just stir, stir, stir. Now the heat is off. I haven't put the heat back on. All right. Now the one thing you have to watch too with the pastry cream is you don't want it to foam up on you. So once it does start to solidify, I'm going to use a spatula so I can wipe, you know, scrape off the bottom of my saucepan. Ah, there we go. Now by putting this mixture back in, I'm also cooling down the milk. Uh, if the milk was, let's say, 180 degrees and the temperature was 100 of this mix, it is going to bring down the temperature. And that's exactly what I want to do too. It's going to make for good pastry cream. Now the cream itself, it's going to have a nice yellow color to it. All right, beautiful. Now, I'm going to let that need some more beautiful dough's looking good. Now, turn on. Here we go. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Now, what's going to happen uh, if you're using, anytime you're using cornstarch and liquid, uh, you put it in, it's not going to thicken in like 30 seconds. It takes a little time. So what you want to do is you're going to keep on stirring and eventually you're going to start to see that it's going to get thick. At the bottom or the sides of the saucepan, this, uh, this whisk is not going to scrape it. And if any of the um, pastry cream is enlarged in the side, it's going to burn. And that's going to give you a bad product. So once this starts to thicken up, okay, I'm going to go back to my spatula. And I can scrape the sides, and I can scrape the bottom of the pan as well. Here we go. It's starting to thicken up now, which is good. And the last thing is once we get it as thick as we want it, we're going to put it in the refrigerator to cool down. All right, it's starting to thicken up. Now watch. See? On my, my wire whip, it's starting to thicken up, which is a good sign. All right, so now at this point, Forget the wire whip. Now let's go with the spatula. All right. Now, the one other thing you want to do, here's a good, look at this. See how it's thickening for me? That's good. 
Now, if I had the heat too high, it's gonna burn. I don't want that. I just wanna get it hot enough where it's gonna to come together for me and it's gonna thicken. And if you look at the flame, you turn it down even more. Okay, that's what it is. This is a very good cream you can use not only for uh, today's dessert, but you can also use it if you wanted to use it as a filling for a cake. Uh, if you did make homemade donuts, you can actually make a, a Bavarian cream. Um, usually you take some other whipped cream. See how nice that's coming together for us? Look, nice and thick. All right. But chef, it's got lumps, no problem. For our purposes, it's okay. It doesn't have to be super, super smooth. If I wanted it super, super smooth, I'd put it in a mixing bowl and I'd get the paddle or the whip attachment and lo and behold, I can smooth it out. But for our purposes today, I can just go back the whisk and I can just keep on stirring it and I'll get a nice smooth concoction. Now because we're gonna spread this on our sweet focaccia, all right, uh, it doesn't matter how smooth it is, it's about how spreadable it is. As you can see, it's coming together rather well. All right, turn off the heat. Okay, and as you can see, look at that. There's our pastry cream. All right, now, I don't want a little skin on the top, so basically, I want this to cool down. So there's a couple ways I can do this. If I left it in the pot, it's kind of deep, it's gonna take a long time to cool. So what I'm gonna do, okay, if you take the surface area, and spread it out, it's gonna cool faster. So what I'm gonna do, pour it right here. All right. Right into this hotel pan. Oh boy, it smells great. It's gonna cool for me. All right, and I wanna show you the pan itself when I'm done. Look at that. Nothing's burned, nothing's sticking at all. And that's the way you want the pot. So I can put that on the side for now, okay? Now this is steaming, all right? When I put this in the refrigerator, it's gonna cool down for me. The one thing I wanna do also, just so it doesn't, it doesn't get a skim or any kind of scum on top there. You don't wanna to skin to this. I'm just gonna take some butter, all right? Room temperature butter. Okay, my paring knife. I'm just gonna drop some butter and I wanna spread it. And this is gonna keep my pastry cream from getting any kind of skin on it. And this way I'm gonna go back to spread it out and mix it. Let me just move this pot so you can get a better look. And basically here, I'll move this out of the way as well. As you can see, see how the butter's beginning to melt? That's exactly what I want. Because this is gonna give me, look, it's gonna keep now the butter is gonna add extra flavor. Why? Butter, dairy product, milk, dairy product. That's what we started with. But it's not gonna have that skin to it. All right, that's exactly what we want. Okay, as you can see, uh, when we go back later, I can put it in a bowl and I can use the, the whip. All right, so here's what we got. This is all set. So I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator to cool down for us. Everything's looking good on this side. So here's our dough. Once again, here's the savory and there's the uh, fruit. So the one thing I have to do, I'm gonna turn the, well, actually I'm gonna drop this. The one thing I have to do is I have to get the fruit and I have to put it into the dough. So for that, I have my spoon and I'm just gonna skim off all right, some of the liquid, and we'll put the fruit right in. Now there's a couple different ways I can do this. I can put this through a strainer if I want, but for our purposes here, this is just good enough. I have apricots, cherries, raisins, and cranberries. This is gonna make a really, really wonderful, wonderful focaccia. There's no such thing as overdoing the fruit. If you want to put extra in, feel free to do so because it does make for a, a taste to your product. There we go, that's good. I'm gonna turn this back on for a bit. Beautiful, that's gonna to meld together and get together for us. 
There we are. Let's see the excess water. Now. Now. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Now, in any case, if I have to, if it seems like it's a little too wet, once again, a little bit of flour dries it out and it's going to stick together real nice for us. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now, now the other dough we had, okay, this is our savory dough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I can do one of two things. I can put some olive oil down or I can use some pan spray. I'm going to use a little bit of both and I'll show you what we're going to do. A little bit of olive oil. Okay. Now, I used my hand to spread it out. Now, what I can do now is I can take, you notice how the dough didn't stick to my hand. And that's exactly what I want. So now I come off and I can just pull the dough right out. Whoop. Beautiful. Now, see how that stretches for me? Perfect. Look at the bowl. All right, once again, it's clean on the sides, except for a little bit of flour, but that's basically what we're looking for. So now what do we do with this dough? Look at how nice and stretchy it is. In the proof box. All right, that's one down, one to go. Let's put this on the side. Okay. Oh, yes. All right, this is done too. We have our fruit focaccia. All right, once again, let's take the product off. All right. Um, in this case, the same thing. I'm going to use a little olive oil, just a little bit. You're going to see not only is this dough. Uh, it's going to be very tasty. You're going to see it also is going to have nice color to it. So once again, grease, grease the pan. I don't want it to stick. All right, I got my, as you can see right now, it's not sticking. Okay, beautiful. I want to save this because we have one more dough we're going to do. And now, oh, beautiful. Look at this. Okay, and once again, if I put a little bit more olive oil on my hand, it's not going to stick, and I can spread the dough out. So a little bit here. Yeah. Beautiful. Look at those so far. Look at that nice color that's in this. So once we finish it out, it's beginning to stretch now in the proof box. Watch what happens. It's going to be a very good very good fruit focaccia, okay? Let me get my towel. All right. Now, the last dough I'm going to make doesn't require any proofing. So right now, as you can see, take a look at that nice color. We're going to stretch it out even more. It's going to fill the pan. And at the end of our production, what's going to happen is we're going to put some powdered sugar on this. It's going to be perfect. So this is going also in the proof box. Okay. Now, with the uh, mixer, the last thing I want to do is I'm going to start, all right, put the butter away. We're going to make the sweet focaccia. Now, it's just like a normal focaccia. The only difference is it's going to have sugar in it for sweetness. It's not going to have any uh, salt. And you're going to taste, it's like eating bread, like a sweet bread. That's the best thing I can explain, except it's not like a cake. It's going to be more like a, a sweet uh, white bread. So once again, we're going to start out. We need two and a half teaspoons of dry yeast. We'll start with that. Here. Two and a half teaspoons. So we'll use a teaspoon this time. That's one. That's two. That's a half. Someone asked me once, what happens if you use uh, three or four teaspoons, you're going to get an airier product. It's going to raise up, rise up even more. So depending upon what your uh, 
prerogative is, if you want to turn around and, and get an airier product, yeah, just use more yeast, all right? So, warm water, okay, all-purpose flour, three cups. There's one. There's two. There's three. That's done. Okay, warm water, granulated sugar. We're going to use the vanilla sugar again. Calls for three tablespoons. One, two, three, and we'll go with three and a half. All right, now, yes, yes, yes. Vegetable oil, and we're going to put that on the um, on the platter when we go to uh, when we go to uh, smear it on the um, baking sheet. We use vegetable oil instead of the uh, olive oil. Okay, so now we're going to mix our dry ingredients. There we go. There we go. Now the last thing we need, one and a half cups of warm water. I wish I was that good picking lottery numbers as I am measuring. That's a one and a half cups. There we go. Once again, we're going to pour it in. Okay. And we're going to let that go. If we have to give it a little help, we will. This particular dough itself really doesn't need to uh, have any proofing time. So once it comes together, we'll be all set. So we have our doughs proofing. The only thing we have to do with the savory dough, we're going to stretch it out. Okay, and there's a couple things, all right, okay. These are where you can do the, you can just follow a recipe or you can, um, if you want, you can uh, add some little extras to it. I had some pepper strips and some red onion. Now, normally I'll use Vidalia onions, but because this has like an Italian flavor to it, the red onions would stand out even more. So what I have is the pepper strips and I have the red onions. I took some uh, salad dressing, some Italian dressing, tossed it, and I marinated it overnight. Now I can do one of two things. I can actually saute this a little bit, or I can just put it on top and just put it in the oven. And at 400 degrees, as the bread is cooking, it is also going to turn around and it'll cook these up too. So that's basically, that's the first thing I'm going to do with that. Now, grape tomatoes, okay, these are nice, plump, juicy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push these down into the dough. But before I do that, I'm going to give them a little slit. All right, why? Because I want to just, so this way the juice will come out and it'll bubble up, they'll wrinkle up a little bit and they'll sort of, um, remember what I said when you have the flavor, if you take the uh, extra moisture out, you're going to intensify the flavor. So that's what I'm going to do with the grape tomatoes for the um, savory. Now. For the sweet focaccia, we already made, we already made our uh, pastry cream. And what I have here, I have some strawberries, I have some black raspberries, and I also have some blueberries, okay? Sweet enough, I'm just going to put those right on. I want to show you one thing. <clears throat> Let's see, how are we doing here? Oh, we got to do the same thing. I have to turn around and kick this up a bit here. There we are. Okay, and I think we're going to go to, we'll go to a second speed. There we are. That seemed to work the last time. A lot of times when people, you get these beautiful strawberries. Okay. And one of the worst things that I've seen people do, and it really ticks me off because it's, it's a waste. Okay. They'll go to clean the strawberry. Now, when they go to take the green part off, all right. Now look at how much you're wasting, all right? That's a, that's a crime in my opinion. Here's how you do it, okay? You take your paring knife, you choke down on it, and what you want to do is not turn the knife, you stick the knife in the top, and you're going to twist the fruit right around. Now watch what happens, right? 
look what I got as compared to this. Look at this as compared to that, okay? And look at the piece of fruit, all right? So that takes a little bit of time, but that's how you want to do it. That's how you can tell a uh, professional from a pretender because they'll just do it right because when you're doing these strawberries, after a while you get on a roll, bingo, and it looks like, oh, I don't know, little spiders or something, but that's actually more of a yield. So now what I can do is I can cut this in half and I can have more of a yield, but this, now, like I said, it's just a waste of time to sit there and do that. Why would you spend good money and then waste this much? If you were to take this whole batch and weigh it, I'll bet you about two, three, maybe even four ounces. So that's what you don't want to do. This is what you do want to do, okay? Now, if you didn't have a knife, there's two other things you can use. See this? It's a quarter teaspoon. You can actually take this and you can just look. Okay, you can clean the strawberry that way. Look what I got. Bingo, no waste. If you had, uh, they usually have what is known as a Parisian scoop. If you see the melon ballers, a Parisian scoop is maybe like three eighths of an inch. It's a little smaller than a quarter teaspoon. You can actually use that and you could shuck out the top of the strawberries. So there's many different ways. You just don't have to top off, you know, just throw it out that way and waste. All right, so let's see. Oh, we're gonna have to give this a boost. Come on. And I think I'm gonna give it just a tad more flour, tighten it up. Usually based on experience, I've done a lot of these doughs so I know just how much I can put in, uh, how much I can get away with. And like I said, the worst case scenario is if it's too dry, all I have to do is put a little bit more liquid into it. But I don't think so. I think this time we have a winner. All right. So we have our strawberries. We have our fruit later. And we have our uh, breads are proofing. So in another few minutes, we'll be able to... Uh, pull them out, about 15 minutes or so. We'll pull them out, stretch them out, and we'll get them ready for the oven. All right, let's see how our dough is doing out of the proof box. Let's see. Oh, beautiful, look at this. This, let me get this out of the way. Remember our fruit focaccia? We'll look at it now, all right. It's still a little, oh, it's tacky, but you know what, look, it's not sticking. This is beautiful. So look at how it proofed. Look at how it's going to, I'm going to stretch this out, okay? And into the oven we go, all right? Look at that nice color. And if you could actually be here and see it and feel it, it's really, really nice. The dough softened up, and that's just what you want because the gluten network relaxed. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get this going. Uh, I'm going to give it about 20 minutes and we'll take a look. So in the oven it goes, all right? Take a look now, the color and the texture. It's gonna rise up, get better. Here we go, that's in. I'm gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. Now the one thing I love about these ovens is I can interject some steam. So basically what I'm gonna do is when it gets ready to come out, I'm gonna shoot it with some steam. It's gonna give it a little bit more color and it's also gonna get it a little bit more crunchiness and texture. So. That was our fruit focaccia. Now here's our savory one. Look at this. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. That's just what you want, okay? I want to be able to stretch the dough out. Okay, now you got to remember, this is not a pizza. This is, this is a bread dough, but look at how it slides out. It's not sliding back from you, and that's exactly what you want. So here, what we're going to do, let's see, did I have my cheese? Yes, here we go. All right. This is going to be a really good creation. So what I'm going to do, remember I said I had my, I had some uh, grape tomatoes. I'm going to cut them right in half, and I'm just going to push them right in to the dough. This is going to be quite the, you know, if you have some children at home and you want to fool them, and you say, hey, why don't you try a piece of this? 
It's got the jelly beans, you'll love it. And actually, it's actually healthy to trick them into eating some grape tomatoes. All right, we're gonna get these. We're gonna get one more. One more tomato. Ah, beautiful. Now, as promised. Okay, here's the, um, you can see what we have. All right, here's the uh, onions and peppers. All right. Now they've been marinating for 24 hours in some uh, Italian dressing or flavor. All right. Now the thing about bottled Italian dressing, tastes good the way it is. I don't have to put anything else to it. No salt, no pepper, no other seasonings. So I'm just going to take some of this, mix it up, and we're going to strew it right over the focaccia like so. All right. Now the, um, the dressing that's on this, believe it or not, is going to keep our focaccia nice and moist. All right, there we go. Beautiful. Now, once again, this is going to look really, really good when it comes out of the oven. Now, there's a couple other things you could do if you want it. Uh, if you wanted to get extra flavor, I could have gotten more dressing. I could have gotten uh, a pastry brush and I could have painted the surface. But there's olive oil. There's plenty of flavoring in the crust. I really don't need to do that. So I'm going to just stick with this. Now, lastly, but not least, there's two things you can do too. I'm going to put, I'm going to use a little double header. This is uh, grated uh, Romano cheese. It has much more flavor than Parmesan. So I'm just going to put a tad on here now. And when the focaccia comes out, while it's still warm, I'm going to put more on. Okay, so here we go. All right, and once again, take a look, take your pictures. It's going to go in the oven. We're going to give this about 16 minutes and take a look. So that's in. Oh, beautiful. Everything's coming along. What does that leave? The last thing, okay? Remember our sweet focaccia? Here it is. All right, put this on the side, okay? Look, beautiful. Pick it up, I can stretch it. That's just what you want. The dough is very workable. Now, if you don't have a proof box at home, and you want to get some results. If you have a gas oven, the temperature with the pilot light is normally about 100, maybe 105 degrees. My proof box is running at 110 degrees. The only difference between my proof box and your oven is the fact that I have a water pan in here, so I'm getting some humidity to keep the product moist. If you wanted to, you could put some hot water, steaming hot water in a dish in your oven Okay, and at 100, 105 degrees, you get pretty much the same result. You can use that as a proof. Okay, that's one thing I've, a lot of times with the students, I tell them the same thing. If there's no room in the proof box, they can just go ahead and put their, uh, we have about 12 ovens here in the, uh, the kitchen. They can just use one of those. It's about 100, like I said, 100, 105 degrees. Okay, now, here's our sweet dough. Okay, once again, this is all I'm going to do to it because when it comes out, remember our pastry cream? Look at how nice that is. Okay, I'm going to put on the pastry cream when it's done, and then I'm going to finish off with fresh fruit, and that's going to be our sweet focaccia. So here again, this is going in the oven. Oh, let me move some things over. And that's going to be about 14, 15 minutes. So right now, we're just going to wait. And when those are done, we're going to finish them off. And then I'll show you, especially with the fruit, uh, we're going to put a little bit more cheese on the savory one. And you're going to see how easy it is to make three wonderful focaccias. All right. It's been about 25 minutes. Let's take a look and see how our products are in the oven. Looking good. They smell good. First one out. Uh, because I want to cool it down so I can put the pastry cream on it. Remember our savory? Remember how nice and lily white it was? Look at how beautiful that is. I'm going to put that right in the refrigerator. I want it to cool down so this way it won't melt our pastry cream. All right. Okay, that'll just be a few minutes. Now, next one out. 
Remember our one with the onions and peppers? Beautiful little crunch to it. And as promised, we're going to put a little, a little bit more cheese on it. It's going to melt down. Okay, this is going to be very, very good. We'll let that cool down. We'll be able to slice that. A little bit more cheese. There we go. And finally, we have our fruit focaccia. Now, you really should be here in this kitchen to smell this. Oh boy, you can smell the nice sweetness of the fruit. Let me shut my oven off. Okay. So, basically what you want to do now is I have my uh, speed rack. I won't let it cool down. So I'm going to put this on a speed rack. A couple things you want to keep in mind when you pull anything out of the oven. You don't want to cut it right away. You just want to let it cool because right now, because it is, it is first off, it's too hot to eat. You want to let it cool down a bit. And besides that, you can see, look at that little bit of, has a nice little crunch to the flavor. And inside, it's, it's perfect. It's going to be, the dough is cooked and the fruit itself, it's mixed in. It's going to be nice. The only thing I want to do is once this cools down, if I were to sprinkle powdered sugar on this right now, it would be too hot, it would melt, I don't want to, and it would be a waste of time. But I'm going to get my, you know, sugary wand. When this cools down a bit, then I'll put some powdered sugar on it. You cut it up and you can slice it. So we're going to put this on a cooling rack. All right, now, this focaccia here, let me see if I can lift it up without burning my hands. All right, let's see. Ouch, ouch, ouch. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge here. All right. I will show you when this cools down a bit, the underside is just as golden brown as the top. Because remember, we had some olive oil we smeared on the sheet pan, half a sheet pan, and actually cooked. It's going to give us some flavor as well as some nice crunch factor in the crust. You can see a very good aroma. Uh, if you look at the tomatoes, remember how we half them? Look at that. They're wrinkled up purposely. All right, they got nice taste to them. They're dehydrated, they're, they're dried a little bit. Uh, the onions and the peppers cooked. And with the addition of the Romano cheese, it's gonna have a lot of flavor. And remember, we had a lot of herb that we put into this, so it's gonna have double flavor, not only in the crust, but in the topping as well. So, we'll let that cool. Now, let's go check on our our other dough. Okay. Yeah. It's cooled down enough. If it's too hot, you won't be able to spread. Uh, you won't be able to spread the uh, pastry cream. Remember how the cream was? Okay. Look at that. It's perfect. Not curdled up. So, what I'm going to do now is I can take my spatula, all right, and usually I want to start in the middle and I want to smear towards the outside edges, okay? One of the things I teach my students and I tell them is like, don't be chinsy with the filling. You have enough. We're just going to smear it right on here, okay? We have more than enough. All right, now this is just the first step. Okay, you got to remember this is another case of where it's going to be, this dough is going to be very, very sweet, okay? And then what we put on top, uh, the pastry cream and the fresh fruit. Fresh fruit has natural sugar in it. Everything is going to complement each other. Now, the other thing I like is when I buy a pizza, the last thing I want is a lot of crust. No, I don't. What I want is I want to take my sauce or my filling. I want it right to the edge. So I'll do the same thing here, all right? You don't want to work from one side to the other. You want to work from the middle towards the out because this way I can push, 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 and you see how close I come to the edge? That's what you want to do. All right, now, a tad more, okay. Beautiful. And I'm just going to smooth this as best I can. All right, you don't really want any low spots. All right, 
So now, what do we have? We have this beautiful, you know, our sweet dough. What's left? Okay, garnish it with some fruit. All right, I have some blueberries. Okay. You can go willy-nilly with this. You don't have to worry about any particular uh, way of putting on the fruit. All right, now we're gonna have some blackberries. I would have used raspberries, but unfortunately, they're just a little too, uh, little too flimsy and they would fall apart. So that's why I wanted to go with some heartier fruit. Blackberries, blueberries. Okay, and then for a little bit more color factor, once again, Here's our strawberries. I'm going to cut them in half. I'll put them in because remember, I cored them a bit. Got a nice little red complexion here, which is good. Now, if I wanted to cool this down 100%, I could put this back in the refrigerator and basically it's going to have, it's going to come up. If I bring it back to like room temperature, it's going to be uh, easy to eat. All right, it's gonna be perfect, not too cold and not too warm. Let's put another strawberry on, here we go, one more. All right, I think I pretty much, yeah, there you go. So you have your fresh fruit, your sweet uh, focaccia right here. All right, now, one last thing I have to do is get the, uh, let's see, all right, this focaccia here, okay, this is the, uh, this is our savory one, onions and peppers. Here's our fruit focaccia, and like I said, the last thing we're going to do, all right, I'm going to get my sugar wand, and I just want to put a little dusting, there we go. Beautiful. Gives a little bit more sweetness and flavor to it. There we go. Perfect. This seems like one wand full does the trick. All right. Well, there you have it. There's three easy focaccias to do. Fruit, savory, and you have a nice sweet one. You've been watching The Chef's Cook on CCP TV, the educational channel here at the Community College of Philadelphia. It's been my pleasure to share my appetizers and my uh, recipes with you. Till next time, have a great day.